middle of the football field, catches it for a touchdown. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Cool with the big three. Greetings and welcome to McKenzie Stadium here in Vancouver, Washington. My name is Mark Petrosi. And I'm Kyle Blito. We have uh, started a couple minutes ahead of schedule tonight. We apologize to everybody watching at home right now, but we have a great matchup for you this evening. We have the Evergreen Lady Plainsmen versus the Prairie Falcons. It is our third match of this evening. And... Uh, it's promised to be a good one this evening. Again, we are jumping right into action here. No scores so far, 0-0. Zero, zero. However, Prairie on the corner. Evergreen keeper able to grab that one. Kyle, this is going to be an interesting matchup tonight. Uh, we have Prairie in first place in their bracket. They do, and we've seen Mountain View play a couple times. We know how dominant Mountain View is. Prairie's tied and beaten Mountain View this year, so we are in for a treat um, a couple of names of note on the Evergreen side. You're, you're going to want to keep your eye on number three. That's Millie Suarez. She should be a midfielder and forward for Evergreen. Uh, and Evergreen is going to be in the green uniforms tonight, attacking right to left. Prairie in the white, attacking left to right with the throw in here. Uh, Prairie is going to have countless players to look for. Uh, number two is going to be Malika Quigley. She is a senior forward, uh, also a midfielder for the Falcons. Um, Allison Corral is going to be the keeper for Prairie. Keep your eye on her as well. She's a junior. Uh, Savannah Harshberger, again, another senior, but only one of three seniors for Prairie that, again, is tops in the 3A GSHL standings so Kyle what what I think is going to be fascinating about this match tonight is like we've we've said Prairie is in first place however uh there she is number three right there Millie Suarez you she's so dangerous she is so scary there's a good look at her right there you, you can't you can't count her out you you I mean I think Prairie has had a great season, obviously. Um, but, man, you put somebody like Millie Suarez up top. She makes any team dangerous. Yeah, she, you're, She's you're, able to score from anywhere. We've seen it on the set pieces a couple times. She is so scary. Anywhere inside the the 18, just concede a goal. It, it's it's going in. Is she and, and, and the interesting thing is she is such a confident player. The defensive line for Prairie – has got to know that they've got to sometimes, if possible, double team her. So, uh, so I think I think a big thing for for Evergreen tonight is how can the rest of the offensive side for for Evergreen be able to draw some of the attention off of Millie Suarez to where she's able to open up and that Prairie defensive line can't necessarily double team her the way they're, they're going to want to tonight. Couldn't agree more. And again, we've already seen uh, Millie Suarez get the ball a couple times. Uh, looks like there's another good look at her number three for Evergreen. Uh, she is going to get matched up against number 22. That's going to be Haley Reed, defender for Prairie. Uh, and it looks like number 13 as well, Anna Neal. And, and and looking at Anna Neal, uh, like you said, count number 13, uh, she's, she, we, we don't have exact stats on, on her, but she's much taller than, yeah. than Millie Suarez. Well, it's going to be a, a height against speed. Exactly. Millie Suarez is extremely fast out there, so it'll be interesting to see how she's, or if uh, Prairie's able to keep up. So, so what, what I'm seeing within this, this matchup right here, and look at number 22, like you just said, uh, Haley Reed dropping back. The 22 and 13, those two are going to be the ones really double-teaming te double Millie Suarez tonight. And, and with what you said, height versus speed. So Evergreen needs to recognize that 
they're going to have a very difficult time sending balls in from the wing that are in the air. Absolutely. Because because Anna Neal is going to just clear them with her head. So they the, so Evergreen is going to have to work hard on trying to find Millie Suarez's feet inside the 18 or at least at the top of the 18 in order for her to do what she does. Evergreen's wind condition is going to be able to finding – Finding Millie Suarez making these diagonal runs where she's able to use that speed, get away from these Falcon defenders, um, and again, if she's inside the 18, it, it's going to be one nothing. Yeah. Um, it, we're looking at these standings. Again, Prairie undefeated on the year. Eight wins, one tie. The one tie coming against Mountain View, who is extremely dangerous in their own right. So many lethal goal scorers. Uh, Evergreen on the year, four and five, zero ties, four wins, five losses. Uh, Evergreen, 18 goals for, 17 goals against, hovering right around that uh, one-to-one range. Um, however, Prairie, 34 goals scored in nine games and three goals conceded. They've allowed just three goals on the year. Um, so it'll be... It, Evergreen, if there's somebody that can make that four goals scored against Prairie, it's probably going to be Millie Suarez. Right. So, Kyle, excellent points uh, for our, our viewers at home to, to be watching out for. We've talked about the defensive line for Prairie. We've talked about Millie Suarez, the attacker for Evergreen. What's the rest of the team's going to do? You know, we're going we're gonna to have to wait and find out. We've right? got about that's, 72 more minutes to find out here. But that's, that's the big thing, right? Can Evergreen hold the attacking side of, of Prairie? And uh, for those of you watching at home, um, whether that be YouTube Live or, or Channel 328 or 28 on Comcast, uh, tonight is a TV Etc. first. TV Etc. is the partnership between Evergreen Public Schools, Vancouver Public Schools, and Battleground Public Schools. And tonight on the Comcast channels these districts share, there is a live high school sports event on each one of them simultaneously. Of course, the soccer match is on Comcast 28 and 328. But if you pop over to Comcast 29, Battleground is broadcasting the Battleground versus Camus volleyball game. And on Comcast Channel 27, they have Columbia River versus Clarkson volleyball. All of these games brought to you by video production students, teachers, and video professionals. Uh, thank you for joining us on this breakthrough night for Clark County High School Sports. There you have it. Big night. Big night for high school sports. And, and, and Kyle, uh, let's also not forget to mention uh, Friday night for, for high school football is going to be the same way. Three football games simultaneously. Very cool. I, I love it. I love seeing the high school uh, sports getting uh, the exposure like this. So for everybody at home, it's, 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 it was kind of raining a little bit earlier. Um, we're getting into that fall season, so... If you don't want to go out and brave the elements and want to stay at home where it's nice and warm, um, find us on, on, on all these cable channels with your, your favorite high school team playing. And with that, Evergreen gets a free kick. I believe it's going to be called for handball. Millie Suarez with the, Ooh. oh, good look there from Evergreen. And, and that's, oh, It's not over yet. This is Here Millie Suarez. Go. Here we go. It's on the 18. That's there far right. There it is. Evergreen with the one nothing advantage so far. Again, that was inside the 18. Millie Suarez so dangerous, even with that left foot. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. A little celebration and everything. That's just Prairie's fourth goal allowed on the year. Uh, as far as league play goes, I don't know that they've played behind. Here's a great replay for you. Look at that speed to one touch. Good touch. Just past the keeper. And, and, and Kyle, the, the, the first ball... Where they where they could put it between the two defenders, and she was making her run. I, I was going to say earlier when we were talking about how she was going to be able to find the back of the net. That was that was the way I was thinking exactly because the cross is coming from the side with the height of Haley or excuse me uh, Anna Neal, 
is going to make it difficult. She's going to be able to easily clear the ball with her size. So they got to keep it on the ground. And find those you, diagonal runs. And if you can cut, find that diagonal run, get cut it, cut get a through ball between the two defenders. She's off to the races. That was a perfect example of what what this team can do tonight. And again, I don't know if Prairie has ever played behind this year. So this is going to be interesting to see how they respond. Already two subs for Prairie. And Evergreen is locked in to the fourth seed in 3A GSHL. Uh, Prairie locked into the top spot. Prairie, they hold the tie breaker over Mountain View for head to head. Uh, so even if Prairie is to lose this match, uh, they would clinch the number. They have. They still the have first place. Yeah. Uh, so the two substitutions that just came in for Prairie was number 35 Olivia Jones and number 25 Morgan. Oh Burwick. my! What a rip! That was number 25 from Prairie. There you go, Morgan. Morgan Berwick. Perfect. We, we just spoke of her coming in. So look, look at the difference she's already making. Excellent shot there. Uh, it may have meant to be a cross, but uh, nonetheless nearly finds the back of the net. Uh, it's number two with the ball for Prairie right now. Malika Quigley again, one of the three seniors for Prairie. Maybe a bobbed heads here. We're going to book number 14 for Evergreens. Okay, that's Tatiana Kozakov. It looks like we're going to have a couple of subs for Evergreen as well. That's number 17 that just came in, Kylie Wilson. And I believe number 14. Well, no, you were just speaking of 14, Tatiana. Here's Malika quickly with the ball. Able to shield it. Only one person on the far end, but unmarked for Prairie. Couple of good good touches. Run. Top Wide of the 18. Open. And a bullet just over the top. And that's number 32. Alyssa Talkington. Alyssa Talkington with the shot. She is a sophomore forward for Prairie. That was a nice strike, too. Perfect. I mean, she was left wide open by the Evergreen defensive line. That. Yeah. That can't happen too many more times tonight. Evergreen's got to know you cannot give her that much room. Especially the wide open top of the 18, middle of the field. You know, and Kyle, we, we talk about this so much. Another at, good rip there. At the end of the season, of, in, in the regular season like this. Um, yes, Prairie has got first place locked up for themselves. However... You're, you're talking about going into playoffs here soon. Evergreen wants to go in feeling confident. Um, and for Prairie, they want to keep that momentum going as well. So so both teams um, have a lot to, to value from, from, from this match tonight. No, and we did see Mountain View not play Olivia Fothergill at all tonight due to their locked in as the number two seed. Here's Malika Quigley on the outside of the 18 cent into the box. That's number 25 for, for Prairie Morgan Borwick. Evergreen looking to cure it. Mm. Sent into the box again. That was number 14 on the shot. Allison Corral. It's going to be a throw in for Prairie. I, I'm that looks a, like a corner. I'm, I'm a little nervous seeing how much space uh, Evergreen is given these uh, these Prairie uh, attackers. Yeah, since that goal, Prairie has been all over. They 
definitely want the equalizer. Yeah. That's going to be another prairie throw in. Good moves there from Malika Quigley. What makes her so dangerous is her ability to uh, shield and control the ball. Uh, and she's got the, these nifty little moves too that make her so dangerous at the top of the 18. She's really a facilitator more than a goal scorer as well. So she's always, even though she's the point forward, she's always looking for those runs. Yeah. Um, and looking for other people to score. So Kyle, interesting uh, thing I want to point out here is Prairie only has three fre or three seniors playing for them. Evergreen has 12. Wow. Um, we talk very often when you and I do these matches, we, we make notice of, of the freshman, sophomore, oh my goodness. And there's That's an a goal. That's number 32 on the, on the goal, Alyssa Talkington. There it is. Sophomore for Prairie. And just like that, we're knotted up at one. So with with uh, how we talk quite often at these matches, freshmen, sophomore, juniors, um, how amazing. Prairie only has three seniors, and they're in first place with the record that they have this year. Yeah, they're dangerous. Here's a good look. Excellent cross in by number 35, Olivia Jones. And it just squeezed through right there. Good try by the keeper. And, and great job by Alyssa Talkington to be there uh, behind behind the defender, waiting for that ball to p pass through. Great job. And I believe back in keep for Evergreen tonight is going to be Michaela Heiler, uh, a junior keeper for the Plainsmen. I, I got to be honest with you, Kyle. This is, I don't think this is what Evergreen wanted to see so soon. I think Evergreen would have liked to have ridden that 1-0 lead for a little bit longer. We, we still have 20, 20 21 minutes uh, left in this first half. Well, folks at home, this uh, goes to show what kind of match we have for you tonight. A couple of, of things to note, too. We've talked about Allison Corral. Um, Evergreen's really had the one opportunity so far, but Allison Corral, the, the keeper for Prairie. Uh, Prairie coming into this year didn't have a keeper, so Allison Corral stepped in, and despite being 5'3 and never playing keeper in her life, she has performed very well. That's number 25, another goal. Morgan Borwick, just like that. Prairie on top, 2-1. to one. Big change of events. Yeah, just like that. In about two minutes, Perry has two goals and the lead. It's a good replay. Beautiful strike. Just right over the keeper. So patient too. Yeah. Just yeah. waiting for that optimal and, that and opportunity. And Kyle, once again, I mean, this is what you expect from from a senior squad. I mean, th these Prairie ladies, they. They're well-focused. So right there, uh, oh, there we go, 14. Uh, Maya Davis, number 14 for, for, for Prairie. I really like, Kyle, how she's looking in the mid midfield. Um, a lot of plays have been going through her. She she is a really solid player. And Mark, I want to touch back on that point you said too. This looks like a, a team full of seniors, even though they have just three. That all comes back to good leadership from the current seniors, uh, and a winning a, a winning formula. I mean, they, they figured it out. The last four years, Prairie has four league titles. 
they won their league four years in a row, and that's the first time in school history uh, that that's happened. Um, but they've just come to know what it takes to win. And, and with that, Kyle, I, you've got to give uh, uh, Michael Throne uh, props as, as head coach. Uh, for his for his great leadership as well on getting these ladies ready. That shot goes just wide as well. Looks like we have a substitution for the Lady Plainsman. Uh, number 21, Janelle Uro, is going to take a seat. I haven't said Millie Suarez's name for quite a while. Well, we, we, we spoke at the beginning that she's she's it's gonna be tough getting her the ball. It's it's gonna take that whole midfield keeping possession and pushing the ball up the pitch, I think, in order to then find Millie. That's number fourteen. Wow. That was Maya Davis on the shot, goes near post. Uh, luckily, Michaela Heiler right there, able to dive and make that save. And and, and I was just speaking of, of Maya Davis. She she is she's a really strong player out there for them. Very impressive to watch so far this evening. Over the top, Malika Quigley gets ahead on it, sent into the box again. Keeper comes out. That's in. Yep, that's three to one. Tough to tell. Prairie doesn't seem to be celebrating around one specific person. I believe that may have come off an evergreen head. Yeah, I mean it just it just kind of rolled into the back of the net. Yeah, keeper came out and unfortunate that uh, that rolled way back there. Um, but just like that, Evergreen jumps out to a one nothing lead. Prairie responds with three goals of their own. Well, here's a here's a good replay. We'll find out exactly who scored this. So Malika Quigley gets ahead on it. Sent back in 32, Alyssa Talkington. Headed by number two for Evergreen. You're you're right, Kyle. Maddie that Harris. was off of number two. That's too bad. That was off of number two uh, for Evergreen. Maybe a little miscommunication between the uh, the captain, defender, and the keeper there. Doesn't matter how it goes in. How it goes in. It's, uh, it's goal a goal. Goal is a goal. And Prairie threatening again. Good cut back. What a strike. That's a good this, corner for Prairie. This Prairie team is is really Im impressive. You know, we've talked a lot about how Mountain View just can send shooter after shooter after shooter right at any opposing defense. Uh, I'm seeing more of the same with this Prairie team. We haven't had the pleasure of covering them this year, but they look scary. Uh, and, and you're right, Kyle. This is our first time uh, calling one of their matches. I am so impressed with this Prairie team. Like I said, I, I, I would, if you would ask me, I, I think we'd be looking at a full squad of seniors out there with the composure that they have. Now, what if I told you this, nearly this entire team is going to be back doing this again next I, year? Right. I mean, and like you just said, they've won four titles in the past four years. I, I, Next year, it's going to come down to Mountain View Prairie again, just like it's been. We did just see uh, three substitutions for Prairie. Uh, we've got about 14 minutes left in the first half, so maybe giving the midfield a little break and let them get some water and rest for a second. Well played there by uh, Michaela Heiler, sent in by 25, Morgan Borwick on the cross. So, ooh. That'll be a uh, prairie free kick at the midfield line. And, and look at Maya Davis. 
I mean, she. It, most people would have been rolling, saying, I got Charlie Horst in the leg, and she's just, boom, right back up, ready I, to roll. I would have called in sick to work for the next <laughs> week and a half if that happened to me. She's hot. She opt up and she's ready to score. Yeah, I, I, she, she's been a lot of fun to watch so far this evening. So, so, Kyle, the the, the big question is 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 how is Evergreen gonna find Millie Suarez? I mean, Mark, with what I'm seeing, here we go, here we go. No, I, but she, I don't know if they do find Millie Suarez at this point. It, that Prairie defensive line. Since they allowed that goal, they she's had one touch on the ball, and that and, was it right there. And, 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 and you can look here. They have four on the defensive line, and then we have uh, Maya Davis and number 10, which unfortunately I don't see on my roster. But the two of them are, are basically playing holding mid. So – you know, you got those two to get through in order for you to get to Millie Suarez. Uh, Ever Evergreen is really going to have to think about how how they're going to find their striker. I, I, I Kyle, I know that you say that <laughs> it's going to be very difficult, and there's there's part of me that that definitely agrees with you, but. There's got to be a strategical way that that, um, I, and and I think you you nailed it at the beginning. Diagonal runs from from Millie Suarez is is, is maybe going to be the key to to that success. I, I don't think any balls over the top, with how tall this defensive line is, from Prairie is 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 going to help them. I think you got to keep it on the ground, find Millie Suarez's feet, and 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 let her do her thing. Which we saw for the first goal for them, is what, you know, for Millie Suarez and Evergreen, uh, was was very successful. So I, it can be done. It's going to be another throw in for Prairie. Coming up with eleven and a half minutes remaining here. Prairie with the three to one advantage. I think the big thing, Kyle, for, for Evergreen is keep your head up, don't look at the scoreboard. They know how to play good soccer. Um, they're 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 doing great. Uh, just just keep keep going. Keep doing what you know what you need to do in order to be successful. Yeah, Evergreen has had that one excellent opportunity that they did capitalize on for their brief lead. Uh, again, Prairie has responded with three goals of their own. Evergreen really unable to find any momentum since then. Uh, really shut down the Millie Suarez attack as well. Uh, she's only had a couple touches on the ball, but immediately just one-time touches that just aren't finding feet. Yeah. It's good to hear the the families and supporters uh, below us this evening, filling up the, the stands, cheering on their, their team. And you know what's interesting, Mark, is I'm looking at these standings right now. Uh, Prairie, again, eight wins, zero losses, one tie on the year. Overall, their eight wins, four losses, three ties. Outside of league play, they had four losses and two ties. Oh, there's a good shot of the stand right there. I'd be curious to see uh, who they were matched up against. I know they did take on Camus, um, and that was not a close match. That was about 10-1 to 1, mm. uh, from what I've heard. But uh, it would be interesting to uh, to see a, a couple teams better than this Prairie team. Yeah. Now, let's also just keep in mind, though, that was preseason. Absolutely. Um, so who, who knows 
you know, what was what what Prairie was, you know, might have just been getting into the routine of things and checking players out and stuff like that. However, four losses is four losses. I, I would love to know who those those four teams were that that were able to be victorious over this Prairie team. Because looking at them right now, I haven't seen a better team than, it, no. than this Prairie squad. And and we've called, I don't know, a good five six other teams. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and and. This is definitely by far the most impressive. Uh, that was a good shot of number eight right there, Paige Darley for Prairie. Junior forward. I think she's coming off the bench as well. So another another scary goal scorer that's available to the Falcons. Uh, it's going to be called a foul on the ground. Referee says sent up by Evergreen. So, Kyle, we did just see about four. I don't know, three, four more players come in uh, for Prairie. However, one thing that I find very interesting, and, and I know notoriously we don't see defensive lines get subbed out very often, um, but Anna Neal and Haley Reed, number 13 and number 22, who have been marked up on Millie Suarez all night, coach isn't even looking their way. You're playing, as long as Millie Suarez is in, you're there. I love it. Um, and and it's going to be interesting. I mean, look look at look at uh, number twenty two, Haley Reed, just walking, just shadowing. Y yeah, I mean the entire match too. Yeah, and 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 then you have Anna Neal, number thirteen, who who is just waiting right behind. Yeah, look how much space. Uh, well, actually, we'll take a look at this corner first. This is going to be Braden Glazer on the corner kick sent into the box. And that's going to be out um, here in just a second. We'll get a look at how much space they're giving Millie Suarez um, and the respect they have for her, knowing she can score at any any moment. Uh, I've got somebody always within five yards. I mean, Haley Reed hasn't hasn't taken her eye off of her. No, and then even the other forward on the far side for Evergreen, they were just letting her go. And yeah. they, they said, you know, our focus is... is uh, absolutely going to be Millie Suarez right now. And Kyle, with that said, what a compliment to Millie Suarez. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, look, look, she, Haley Reed just made her run, cleared it out, boom, right back to behind Millie Suarez. Uh, with about six minutes remaining in this first half, it'll be interesting to see how head coach Keenan Burris responds uh, for Evergreen, tries to get creative and open up lanes for Millie Suarez back there. Uh, Prairie's got this with the numbers advantage, and that's Maya Davis just dicing up the Evergreen defense. She has been so impressive this first half. So, so Kyle, Canberra is, I mean, the big thing that I, there he is, great shot of him right there. The, the the big thing that I would be telling the Lady Plainsmen at halftime is I, I'm seeing uh, right now we're watching the Lady Plainsmen just kind of and not not really play aggressive. They're they're just kind of going with the flow of where the ball is. They've got to get their head back in this game and 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 get back to that attacking mindset. Um, you, you can't just sit back against a team like Prairie and hope that, that you know, one good counterattack or, or something like that is, is going to happen for them. It, it's going to take from the defensive line all the way up to, to Millie Suarez to, to be able to create something uh, for this evergreen Lady Plainsman. But you, you look at Prairie out there, everybody is moving. Everybody is, is trying to open up. Uh, ball movement is great. We need to see this from the Lady Plainsmen again. And really, okay, Mark, there's going to be one way for Evergreen to come out on top of this game. Uh, we've talked about it before. Prairie has allowed three goals in their entire league play this year. Evergreen needs three more tonight to come out victorious. That's going to start and end with effort. It, you're not going to – the talent Prairie is able to put on the field, you're not going to be able to outplay them. However, 
prairie right now is matching that with top-notch effort. If you're evergreen, what can you do right now? You you have to you have to raise the bar another level, and we'll see if uh, if Keenan's able to get his team to to do that. Mind over matter, right? Yeah. I mean, you you gotta this game. We we we've we've talked the past couple of weeks about this game being like a chess match. Um, you've got to you've got to believe in yourself. You've you, you've got to know that you have what it takes to be victorious, and and you have to you, you have to play that way, even if you're down three to one, like what we're seeing right now. For the Lady Plainsmen, it's okay. It's all right. You're still in this game. You still have a whole other second half to go. Get your head in the game and, and dig deep. This is Braden Glazer on another corner kick sent into the box. Perfectly sent in. Just a hair wide. That was number eight, I believe, Paige Darley. I think you are correct. And, and, and she almost just chested the ball in, bodied the ball in. This is dangerous for, for Evergreen right here. Maddie Harris able to just take it and clear it, though. Michaela Heiler easily scoops that one up. Two minutes left here, first half. Uh, last two minutes will be up to the referee's discretion. Great ball. And another good ball here. 21 just pokes it wide. I, I love that pass uh, by number 10, Braden Glazer. Count it as another shot for Prairie. Looking to extend their 3-1 lead so far. Ooh. Uh, there's Millie Suarez, able to get in front, maybe just clips the That was number 14. Play. Really, Suarez, though, getting aggressive. Love the shoulders. Shoulder to shoulder contact there. There's uh, Maya Davis again, number 14. Great ball. Sent into the box again by number 21. Just all over the field right now. And nowhere to be found on our roster sheet. Kyle, I hate to say it once again. I, I just see too much standing around uh, from Evergreen. Yeah, not able to respond to this uh, Falcon aggressiveness. Um, however, we will get a Lady Plainsman. Free kick here. And for some reason, there we go. And there's the reason. Okay. Wonder why we had two, <laughs> two centers and no <laughs> AR for a second. Came out. <laughs> uh, that's going to do it for the first half. Uh, Evergreen strikes first. Prayer responds with three of their own. Falcons holding a 3 1 advantage so far. Uh, I've got a good second half coming up. We'll be back here in about 10 minutes. It's a day for technology and teamwork for these seventh grade science students at Shahalo Middle School. So if it's facing this way, where would, how would we need to try to go that way? Students are learning how to program tiny robots called Spheros to navigate through a kind of obstacle course, a series of geometric patterns all while changing colors and emitting pre-programmed sounds along the way. It's fun because like you get to program it to do whatever you like want it to do. 
the lesson allows technology to become a tool for learning. Remember, it's trial and error. So if you don't get it the first time, you just go back and reject. It's called refactoring. The kids right now, they're learning scientific inquiry skills. They're learning about variables. They're learning how to they're all learning how to problem solve. They're learning engineering skills. They, they can put these basic things, like later on in life they're going to say, okay, well I remember back when I was doing the Spherobot lab that I had to break these steps apart. I had to chunk it apart. I had to identify where the problem was before I could make a solution to that problem. So they're able to start off with those just very basic skills of being able to identify what exactly is going wrong and how they can fix that. Students tackle problems through trial and error. It wasn't like going fast enough or it wasn't like the right angle to hit the sticky note so sometimes it would go like where it wasn't supposed to go so we just changed the speed and angle by a little uh, bit and then we got it to hit the sticky note. And then we had it roll for 135 degrees at 300. 135 degrees so it can turn right and the speed was at 60 for two seconds so it can be somewhere in the circle. And it's not just learning geometry and physics concepts along with computer coding skills. Students are using one-to-one -one learning devices to share their work by uploading videos of their spheros in action to a PowerPoint presentation and then sharing their work with their teacher using Google Classroom. Some students even use a simple graphics program to map out some of the things they want their Sphero to do. Kind of draw on it, and you can draw what shape you want to do, or draw like what colors it wants, what we want it to be at every single turn. And with this hands-on use of technology, students have those aha moments that can come from working collaboratively as a team. And they're also learning skills like teamwork, life skills like that, how to work together, how to bounce ideas off of one another. And that's what we do in the science community, in the engineering community. Well, the magic of TV really is truly done behind the scenes. It's the people in the back that are the real MVPs. The viewers in Clark County, the real winners of the broadcast crews delivering football, volleyball, soccer, track hoops, you name it, they've got it. We go tag team with Vancouver Public Schools Game Time and Evergreen Public Schools Sports Broadcasting in tonight's High School Spotlight. This is reality TV. Student driven, behind the lens, and behind the switcher. Something usually goes wrong right at the very beginning in the studio. That's TV. The TV stars beyond the Friday night lights are the man hours logged after school by the crews for BPS Game Time and Evergreen Sports. We're both ready for prime time. People always ask, like, why you keep doing this? We can just go home and hang out. To me, this is kind of hanging out because it's that much fun. VPS and EPS are instructed by former local television news producers, Nick Bull and Matt Griffin. As somebody who's worked in news, you know, I, I've seen what a good production looks like, what a professional production looks like, and that's what these kids are getting. We're trying to give them a real-life job experience that they could take into any type of video field, broadcasting field. The student volunteers are in video production courses during the school day before the broadcast day begins. Comcast Cable Channel 328 as well as their respective live feeds on Facebook and YouTube. I don't really see it as extra work. I, it's kind of, it's really fun to me. And getting to do this after a long school day is sometimes hard because I can get pretty tired. But overall, it's pretty engaging. And not all jobs are created equal. I actually ran the instant replay machine, which everyone says is the hardest job, which it is. Both broadcasts deliver the images differently. VPS streams over a fiber network to a control room a few miles away. EPS completely on scene. The production truck at the stadium or gym where the broadcast is originating from. One of the things that we appreciate is that our school districts actually support this sort of thing, that they don't view it as some sort of, you know, extra thing. It's something that actually benefits our community from the folks at home watching, so the kids on the court or the field, and the kids behind the camera. It's, it's something that they value, and we appreciate that. And the programs have churned out some professionals in the industry, like Timber's Emmy Award-winning director, Patrick Brown. This gives an opportunity to just create that school spirit you know, showcase students doing positive things in a way where they can learn real-life job skills. We are the people who dictate what happens. Most will say you can only dictate what happens in your personal life, but that's wrong. 
democracy only works if you get involved, not stand by and idly watch, then complain about our leadership. That power is in our hands. So stand up and participate. Family, friends, everyone depends on it. Whether it's volunteering to read to elementary school students, or preparing food for our summer meals program or being a lunch buddy, or making sure our concerts and sporting events are safe for students and visitors, or volunteering to teach art discovery classes, there are countless volunteer opportunities in Evergreen Public Schools. I think most people value our kids as being our future, and uh, so we need to help keep those kids going. And signing up to be a volunteer is easy. Just go to our website, evergreenps.org forward slash community partnerships. Click on the link to download a volunteer application, fill out just a few forms and submit them. Once you've cleared the simple background check, you'll be ready to make a difference. This art discovery volunteer sums it up with a quote from a famous Dr. Seuss book. It makes you feel good to volunteer. It's fun to help the kids. It's fun to get to know the kids. Um, I think kind of like the one slur in the Lorax said, unless someone like you helps a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not, so you need to help in order for things to get better. And I think that volunteering is definitely one way that you can help. Make a difference. Become an Evergreen Public Schools volunteer. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. That's a major key. Another one. Another... More will talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise! Louise! Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Back to the second half of action here at McKenzie Stadium on this beautiful, cozy Tuesday evening. I've got Prairie and Evergreen ready for 40 more minutes of soccer. We are back live, Kyle. Uh, this is this is our third match of a triple header this evening, and what an interesting match so far. Uh, Lily Suarez gets on the back of the finds the back of the net for Evergreen, probably within first 10 minutes or so. And soon after that, it's three to one Prairie. Yeah, three quick goals, two right back to back for, for the Falcons. 
uh, extending that lead. So, Kyle, we were talking uh, while we took a break uh, during halftime. And this this Evergreen team is very strong, very solid. They play well together. They have an incredible striker. Um, if if they can get their heads back in this game and keep their eye off the scoreboard, I don't see why we couldn't see another goal or two from them. With that being said, though, Prairie looks outstanding. Yeah, Evergreen's going to need a lot of their thing, a lot of things to just go exactly right for them to find the back of the net uh, once more, let alone twice. Uh, that first goal, uh, beautiful setup and everything from Millie Suarez, um, but that may be their lone shot and shot on goal for the entire match. Uh, just like that, we're going to get a Prairie throw in right around the corner flag. Well, we always love this part of the game, Kyle, because we get to see, we get a glimpse of what coaches talk to the teams about at halftime. We get to see what adjustments were made. That's an unfortunate miss kick right there. Evergreen a, needs to just get it out of yeah, there. Yeah, a lot of playing inside the box. This is Malika Quigley on the top of the 18. Sends it back very generously out to number three, Savannah Harshberger. Uh, we were told at half she scores a lot. And she's got a great kick. Uh, and there it is, Exhibit A. That was that was exactly what we were just told at halftime. And she came out and did her thing. You know, and I was questioning that pass from Malika Quigley out there, but that's why she's playing and I'm not. She, she was able to find feet. Here's a good replay of this. Outside the top 18, but knows exactly where her teammate is. Upper V. No contest, and four to one. It's interesting that you say that, Kyle, because I was kind of wondering why she dropped the ball with being inside the 18 like that. Yeah. And she, I mean, it's she she had space, too. Um, obviously, she knew what she was doing, though. So, Kyle, one thing that we talked about right leading up uh, before halftime tonight with, with Evergreen was was the standing, the flat-footedness. Um and I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick to what I said leading into halftime. And Evergreen. Oh, that's a close call, but referee did call offside. Yeah, just offsides. Uh, Hope the keeper's okay. I think that was number 17, Kylie Wilson for Evergreen, senior midfielder. Uh, running into the keeper. Keeper does look a little shaken up there. There she is, number 17. Here's a good replay. I think she was off, but it was pretty close. Looked like a, a knee to the chest right there. Um, totally unintentional, yeah. but never want to see that. Uh, but just like that, Evergreen, just a couple steps away from... Uh, Oh, yellow card for number 17, Kylie Wilson for Evergreen. Keenan doesn't like the call, that's for sure. I I, I don't think it was intentional. I mean, I, 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 it, it, it kind of seemed to me like a 50-50 ball. Referee just explaining the situation. Uh, and one thing I am noticing... Kyle, unfortunately for Evergreen, is the ref has not asked to, to stop the clock, so we haven't lost that much time. But no, clock good, does not stop here. Yeah, a good 30 seconds have gone by. Keenan's still uh, talking to the referee. Totally doesn't agree with the call there. And now we're going to go over, I think, and have a talk with... It's going to be an evergreen free kick is what it's looking right around the 40-yard line. And they're still talking. Looks like the ref says, sorry, it's just my call. Both teams stacking the 18-yard line. Evergreen looking to run on to this one. I think it's maybe pretty... what, what Coach was also saying, Kyle, is 
uh, he didn't really give Evergreen any chance to get a player in because uh, you with a yellow card you automatically go off uh, so maybe he was saying hey you didn't even give us a chance to get a player out there what a good ball there from Malika Quigley but uh, um, right to Alyssa Talkington but the Evergreen defense was able to uh, poke that away and clear it a couple of good give yeah. and goes from the Lady Plainsman here in the second half as well it, we're, we, God, we're just seeing a really condensed ladies' plains men. I, they, we've we've seen in the in the matches we've we've called tonight w what a benefit it is spreading the the field out, and and we're just not seeing that from the lady plains men. And I think that would be it, it's it's what we talked about at the beginning of this match. In order to find uh, Suarez, they're, they're going to have to spread out that defensive line and find that, that diagonal run of a through ball. And we've got the quick corner taken again by Prairie, sent out, but mm. Evergreen's not falling for it twice. Another corner. But Prairie will get another corner. Good look at number 10 there for Evergreen, Allison Long, captain midfielder for Evergreen. Sent into the box. Malika Quigley gets wow. ahead on it. Looking for the call. I'm not sure if she was being held down or not. When it, it, it seemed from up here, Kyle, it seemed like she was the one that went kind of over the back there. So yeah, it's tough to tell from our angle. But she didn't like that call. It's going to be an evergreen goal kick. Uh, goes out off Prairie. Now we've got an evergreen throw in. Good throw, but to no one. Swarming defense from the Lady Plainsman. Great ball by number 14. Maya Davis there. She has had such a great match tonight. She really has. She's a facilitator back there. Uh, and now we've got Morgan Borwick, who already has one goal. So dangerous out on that far side, though. Uh, another Prairie corner coming up. It, this is, it's got to be nearing double-digit corner kicks taken for, for the Falcons. For Prairie, yeah. Just in the first 47 minutes, it seems. There's going to be no uh, quick corner taken here. Prairie just looking to add to their lead. That's uh, Savannah Harshberger on the corner. Who was the last one to get a goal, too, for Prairie? And we're still seeing at... at at the midfield line, Suarez just <laughs> double teamed up there. <laughs> There's double 14s for you. Pretty scary, too. A lot of these corners are resulting in goal kicks, which means Prairie is the last one to touch it, which means they're the first one to the ball. Yeah. Um, they're getting these opportunities on these corners. That does not bode well for Evergreen long term. You can hear the crowd, though, still cheering on these Lady Plainsmen. They don't think they're out of it yet. They do need to find their rhythm here soon, though. Maybe curtains for uh, the Lady Plainsmen. You know, Prairie looks good, but I, I wouldn't mind seeing more uh passes from prairie it, yeah just simple passes um they're finding these goals and these shots but i i, I wouldn't mind seeing just a, a little bit I, f I feel like at the beginning of the first half we saw a lot better ball movement from prairie than, than we've seen so far in the latter part of the first half and the start of the second half i i do agree Oh, they're giving Malika quickly plenty of room to move and, and turn. And they love finding her there. They do. She she is doing her job, which is send the ball to her, let her hold it up, and 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 do what we saw: drop the ball to Savannah uh, Harshenbarger or or anybody else uh, that is there. She she is doing her job tonight. And I don't know if they heard us talking about this, Mark, but they are making these passes now. Yeah. 
Borwick on the cross. Top of the 18. Shot taken by number 11, Macy Hall. Right to the keeper. Good defense there from Evergreen. Able to keep it away, but right, goes right back to Macy Hall. Uh, out to Malika quickly. There, there, there she is. I mean, she just, she does a great job. She's that, that, that body at the top of the 18 that you just want to send the ball to let her let her get something on it and then and she'll distribute it uh we have a keeper change um for the prairie falcons right now and I, i'm wondering if um the goalkeeper for prairie falcons um Al allison coro I'm, I'm wondering if she's running straight back to the locker room right now i, I hope she's okay yeah, she did uh, collide with an Evergreen player earlier. Uh, again, hope she is okay. Echoing Mark's statement. Uh, another Prairie throw-in coming up. Yeah, it looks like the trainer's still checking on her, too. Yeah. She's got her arms above her head. I, I, I think you might be right, Kyle. At, at first, I thought it was just like a, a knee to the thigh or something like that when she went down. But may, maybe you're right. Maybe she did get hit in the chest or something because she's got her arms above her head as if she's trying to get her breath. It's a goal kick for Evergreen Lady Plainsman. I'd love to know what what is going through Suarez's mind right now, Kyle. You, you, you know she's just itching. There there you go. That's a great shot by our, our camera. Yeah, still looking to catch her breath over there. Looks like she's okay. I hope, I hope she's able to maybe just catch her breath and go back in. Or just, you know, no reason to, to push it. That's true, too. Yeah, you've got a 4-1 advantage here. Uh, you've already secured first place. Yeah, very good point. Just stay healthy, get right for playoffs, and go from there. But back to Suarez, you know, she, she's, she's, God, I just wants somebody to be able to find her. Yeah. Up I, top. I, have she touched the ball the second half? I, no. She, you, you know she's just itching up there for somebody to be able to find her. I, I would assume this is probably a little frustrating for her. Great ball right there. Love it out to the wing. She's going to send it in. Great job by the keeper. And yeah, there's a good look at Millie Suarez there. Just unable to, to get involved here the second half. Yeah. That's suffocating Prairie. Falcon defense just all over here. here here's number eight. Paige Darley, wide open, well unable done. to find the back of the net. Great job, keeper. Michaela Heiler on the save. However, Prairie still has it. And another save from Heiler. Excellent. And there she is, first touch on the ball of the second half. That's a beauty, a too. Great, a great one at that. Falcons knew that was uh, the plan all along, though. Sent back to Hyler. Cleared right to the Falcons. Malika Quigley on the shot. Well, may have bounced off. Yeah, I think it was a deflection. They're going to call that a corner kick. Yeah, we're going to get a sub for Evergreen. Mm, wow, surprising sub. That Suarez going off. We've got a bunch of moving parts out here. 14 coming on, which is Tatiana Kosovic. We spoke of her earlier. And it looks like, I'm, I'm trying to see, but it looks like maybe number 11, Leah Keniston, has moved up to the striker position. Uh, we are going to get a Falcon corner. Interesting setup, too. You can yeah. see the five Falcons making a wall right there. 
Um, I do want to see this and there kind they of go. just explode towards the six. I mean, Malika ve- Quigley, a, another push. Very, very interesting, too. Uh, oh, is he calling a penalty kick? It is going to be a penalty kick. Uh, he's saying number two for Prairie, Malika Quigley, did get pushed a little bit. What a fascinating corner kick. I mean, this this Prairie team, y- you got to love what they're doing at training because this is just a reflection of, of what they do at training. So very interesting. We've seen quite a few PKs tonight. We'll see if Malika Quigley is also able to find the back of the net. That's blocked. Michaela well, Eilers saves the PK. Well done, keeper. That's going to be a corner, though, for Oh, big smile on her face, too. That's great to see. Yeah. A 4-1 deficit, but they don't care. Yep. Well done. And, and we've been talking about uh, Malika Quigley in, in that box all night tonight. She's she's kind of impressive how she can, even not on the ball, she can stir stuff up in there. Yeah, such a big, uh, a big factor. For the Falcons. Look at her. She's a great player. First to the ball there. Uh, actually, com- <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, committed to Southern Oregon. She's a senior now. She committed her sophomore year. Uh, so that's where she will be attending okay. and playing soccer next year. Here's a good replay. And Well done. What a save. Just got that left hand on it. Big sigh of relief from Heiler, too. So, excuse me, it was not number 11, Leah Kinniston, that moved up. It was number 14, Tatiana Kosovic, who's moved up to the striker position uh, for Millie Suarez. Yeah, Evergreen maybe going with a totally different formation altogether. Uh, it looks like we've got 11 and 14 up top now. Um, and, Mark, those are two names you mentioned here so far, Leah Kinniston and Tatiana Kosikov. Um, it, it really looked like Millie Suarez was the lone attacker yeah. while she was in. And, and and so, Kyle, I mean, there, there you got a little shot of him right there. What it's done also is it's it's separated um, number 13 for Prairie, Anna Neal, and number 22, Haley Reed. So now having the two strikers up top, they're they're not able to just double team like they were doing earlier to Suarez. Excellent point, Mark, and, and great observation too. Um, look at that hustle too. Here we go, Leah Keniston. Oh, oh, good effort un- there. Unlucky. Uh, it, it was deflected off of Evergreen, so it's going to be a prairie throw in. Um, great heads up play from head coach Evergreen, uh, Keenan Burris as well too, just to sort of combat that that defensive line and see if there's any way to poke that through it's gonna be number 15 taking the throw in sydney weber uh, senior defender for the falcons here's quigley with the ball again sends it out wide to number eight page darley you see god this is what we were just talking about look at that uh, number 11. Oh, what a ball, too. Macy Hall, wide open. And then you have Maya Davis, number 14, wide open at the top of the 18. You just... You, 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 you can't have that if you're... If, if you're evergreen with, with Prairie attacking like that. That was Quigley with the ball taken inside... Taken down inside the box again. Uh, referee's not going to give her a second PK, though, in no. about five minutes. And not at 4-1. No, you ha- <clears throat> it tells her you had your chance. Craig gives it away, but just refused to give up and, and ends up back with the ball. It's going to be a deep throw in for uh, for Evergreen. It looks like we might see three subs coming on for Evergreen as well. Under 21 minutes remaining now. We've got Captain for Evergreen coming back in. There's a good look at her right there. Allison Long, number 10. 
Looks like uh, Suarez is back up top as well. How, have so interesting uh, note though, Kyle. So we were just commenting on how effective it was having the two strikers up at top for Evergreen, and it kind of looks like we've gone back just to to Suarez up top. Oh. And that's another goal for Prairie. That uh, that was quick. Uh, Evergreen had the throw in. Not too sure what happened. I think that was number 11 on the shot, Mace Hall. Yeah. Uh, that makes it 5-1 Prairie now. God, Suarez ju is just shut down this second half. Yeah, and 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 but I'm going to go back to the point though. Put somebody up there with her. Give her space. I mean, we we've got we've got uh, Anna Neal. It, it was a good replay of the uh, goal. It's number eight, Paige Darley on the goal. I'm sorry. That was a great shot, far post. Uh, but once again, we have we have um, Anna Neal and Haley Reed, double teaming, right back up top again. And that was Savannah Harshberger, uh, a shot from about 40, 45 yards out. Again, we did get some intel at halftime saying she has a good shot and she scores a lot. Uh, so good, uh, good notes there. Uh, it's going to result in another prairie corner kick. A oh, good save there from Hyler, and that didn't go into her hands. Quigley was right there. We're going to get a yellow card against Quigley. Kind of tried to block the. Uh, Drop kick there from the keeper. She's going to have to take a break. Is she, is she, is she, she's 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 one of those kind of players. Yeah, she she's in there stirring things up. She she's well aware of what she's doing in there. It, that's that's funny. Just little little head games. Yeah, exactly, so. exactly. They're much more effective if it's uh, closer than five to one. Nonetheless, that's. Uh, that's her game. Yeah, and and let's just make note that's one of Prairie seniors um, out of the three. That's that's one of their seniors. Great number, ball movement. Number fifteen there, the one that initiated that pass is another Great senior ball. for Prairie. Uh, it was Sydney Weber. Mm. Excellent ball to yeah. the top of the eighteen. Great shielding right there. Maya Davis. Prairie in no rush to send this into the box. It passed a couple of fairly decent opportunities, but uh, I mean, Cal, here here we're, here's a replay for you. This is that's uh, the yellow card right there against Malika Quigley, just barely sticking a toe out in front of the keeper. Uh, how interesting, though, Cal. We're, we're seeing Prairie remain possession and and do good tight ball passing inside the 18 like that with not even thinking about getting the strike off. Uh, that's where they're at right now. Pass up a couple good opportunities for one great opportunity, and that's really uh, what makes a difference between a team like Evergreen and a team like Prairie, able to know when to, uh, when to strike. Prairie again, first to the ball. So, Kyle, it does seem right there at that at that goal kick that number 10 uh, for Evergreen, Allison Long, it does seem like maybe she is up top, so to speak, and, and now she's rotated. Now we see 17, uh, Kylie Wilson up top. However, what I find fascinating about this is that when it was – the other two players for Evergreen, we saw the separation between um, Anna Neal and Haley Reed. 
However, we're not seeing that quite as much now that Suarez is back in. That just goes to show the threat that Suarez is. Okay. Suarez just unable to get anything going. Very able to take it down the sideline right to Michaela Heiler once again. walking from Millie too she's got to know that they need her in this game if they're going to make a comeback and got about 14 minutes left in the second half we are live at McKinsey Stadium in Vancouver Washington Great matchup between Prairie Falcons and the Evergreen Lady Plainsmen. Paige Darley maybe passing up a decent opportunity there at the top of the 18. Had a decent look is what it looked like. Yeah. And again, Evergreen trailing by four uh, with a lone goal on the board. However, they did strike first. They did briefly hold the lead in this match. Uh, now trail five to one. Number seventeen, right there for for Prairie. I've 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 been noticing her this uh, second half. Olivia Witherspoon. She she's. Um, She's 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 a good center mid right there. Um, number fourteen, uh, Maya Davis, who we've been seeing just dominate the midfield for for Prairie, um, is now on the bench, and and um, Olivia Witherspoon has just totally come in and taken her place, keeping that same pressure up. Evergreen with another goal kick here, and it looks like we've av avoided rain pretty much this entire match. I know uh, for about 70 of the 80 minutes of the prior game, we did get a little sprinkle. Uh, looks like we are looking out again with this near L.A. weather. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Off Two the post off the twice. Bar, and, and that's going to do it. That was number 21 right there. Three attempts right there on goal, and she finally finds the back of the net. Yeah, post, post, and finally back of the net there. Again, that's number 21 for Prairie. Uh, don't have a number for her, but we will get that for you here momentarily. That's 6-1 for Prairie over Evergreen right now. About 12 minutes left in the second half. As much as I hate to say this for Evergreen, I don't think Prairie is quite done yet. And on that goal, that was uh, natural defender Parker Shank. Again, junior defender up there. Uh, hit the post on her first try, flicked it backwards into the goal. Again, like Mark said, giving them the 6-1 lead. We have a keeper change, too, right now for Evergreen. Michaela Heiler, excellent match tonight. Oh, here's a good replay of this. First post, boom. Second post, there it is. And flip backwards into the goal. What a good play there. Excellent shot, too. Yeah. You got to love how she never gave up on the play. Yeah, just staying committed to that the whole way. Uh, and like Mark said, too, we did have a keeper change. Michaela Heiler taking a seat for Evergreen. 
tough to tell who they brought in, but uh, an excellent, excellent match from Heiler. Uh, without her, it could have been much more damage than six goals. Uh, was able to save a PK back there. Just a uh, great effort from her tonight. It, to, to her credit, Kyle, she's had a great match this evening. Uh, despite the, the, the score, um, you, you, you just... Some of these shots that Prairie has, has been able to get off um, would be tough for any keeper to save. That's right. So um, I, I, I don't think uh, she has anything to, to be too disappointed in. And I think that's Lindsay Magra. Lindsay Magra back there in keep for Evergreen now. Junior keeper. Good hustle by Evergreen, trying to keep possession. Yeah, good hustle from both teams there. Neither willing to give up. I, I, I love, uh, unfortunately, our, our viewers at home can't see it, but we've got um, Suarez and Anna Neal <laughs> just at the midfield line, just talking and shooting the breeze. Okay, I wish... Uh... A lot of walking and uh, some talking from Millie Suarez. Just wish she was able to get more involved right now Yeah. with the play. You know, like we've said, we, we, she's only touched the ball once or twice in the second half, and, and that's just you can't have that happen if, if Evergreen's going to get on the board again. And, and there's, yeah, there they are. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, Kyle, obviously Prairie did their homework. They, they knew they needed to close her down. They, they, they're, they're doing exactly what they needed. They, they knew they needed to do, uh, which is not let her get touches on the ball. If you noticed in the second half, she's had one header, and 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 basically two flicks. Yeah. And and one of them, um, Anna Neal was so tight to her that it just went into Anna Neal, and she was able to to clear the ball. So they they've they've done their job tonight. Uh, Prairie has done a great job. Ooh. Ooh, big collision here around midfield. It's going to be a Prairie kick. Awkward little interaction there between both players. Evergreen player says sorry. And we're moving on. But once again, Prairie's done their homework. They, 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 they were well pre prepared for, for tonight's match. Way to come out from the keeper, Migra. It's going to be an Evergreen throw in here. Seven and a half minutes remain. Evergreen looking to add another to their tally tonight. Trailing six to one. Plainsman going to get another throw in here, maybe? I think it's going to be Prairie. Big substitution. Four players coming off for Evergreen right now. All four have gone straight to Keenan Perez to get some input from the coach. Prairie unable to string those passes together. We, we saw fall so often. And, and again, there's a good conversation, uh, a good look at the conversation Keenan's having with those four players that came off. You know, Kyle, I think it's a must, right? We talked about how a lot of these, these games are leading into the playoffs and what the mindset needs to be. And uh, kudos to the coach for pulling them over real quick and giving them some, some words of advice and wisdom. Look, you can see a smile on the faces. So, um, Yeah, high fives all yeah, around. Yeah, trying to lift the spirits. Hey, it's okay. Trailing 6-1, but that, that's, a, that's a good group of kids right there. Yep. Great coaching staff, too. Yeah, 
think you can still see Keenan. A couple little interactions with uh, Spirit Young, assistant head coach over there. Good look at the Prairie team over there. Keep it warm. Evergreen tries to clear it right to Prairie number 10 with the rip. Yeah. An absolute bullet. Just nobody from Evergreen marking her. Just, I mean, that was from 25 yards out. That was Braden Glazer, and she was just called up from the JV team. Wow. You can have a rip like that in a varsity game? Rightfully so. Do we do, do we know what, what grade she is? Um... You know, I couldn't tell you. Okay. Uh, do you know she just added to the lead? It's going to be 7-1 now in favor of the Prairie. What a strike. I mean, that was, I mean, she just got all of her laces on it, 25 yards out. Yeah, and it, it looked like that moved a little bit, too, because that had the keeper, keeper guessing. Yeah. Uh, about four minutes remain here in this match. Uh, again, Prairie 7-1 now. I know uh, Harshberger's had a goal. Darley's had at least one goal. Parker Shank had a goal. Uh, Alyssa Talkington has scored. Morgan Borwick has scored. Now Braden Glazer. That may be seven different goal scorers on seven goals for Prairie. Uh, interesting, in interesting note, Kyle. Uh, number 14 for Prairie, uh, Maya Davis, who was just dominating the midfield the majority of the match for this team. I, I don't think she's played. Oh, here we go. Number 11. What there an it excellent is. play well there from Evergreen. Leah Keniston is so fast. Well done. Gets by a couple of Prairie players. Well done. Makes it 7-2 to Evergreen, or in favor of Prairie. And again, before this game, Prairie had here's, a here's the three replay goals. real quick. Look at this cutback. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Switches over to her right foot. Keeper had no chance there. Before this match, Prairie had allowed three league goals. Nice little dance too right there. Um, Prairie has now given up two more league goals this evening. got to be happy with the the 7-2 lead but you also know there's a couple things to work on uh, for head coach Michael Tyrone so what I was saying before the goal Kyle is 14 Maya Davis got subbed out early in the second half and number 17 Olivia Witherspoon has totally impressed me she has totally come in and totally taking the place of Maya Davis. Uh, from a coaching perspective, you've got to be absolutely thrilled with that, especially leading into the playoffs like this. When you can put, when you can sub a player out and put another player in that is just as strong, just as dominant as the player you just subbed off. Uh, this this Prairie team has has got some real depth on their bench. Under two minutes out here. Second half at McKenzie Stadium. Again, it's a uh, chilly Tuesday evening. Uh, but no rain for the last maybe hour or so. Going to get a free kick for Evergreen. I see a little extra time on this one, Kyle. Yeah, we uh, did keeper, have that injury. Yeah, keeper did go down for a little bit, so we might see something here. With the score, though, I wouldn't assume it's going to be too much. It's going to be an evergreen throw-in.
There's number 17, Olivia Witherspoon. Like how she shielded the ball right there and then dropped it to her defensive line. And it's going to be another throw in for Evergreen here. Uh, referee's checking his watch. I think we're going to get the triple whistle here in just a moment. And there it is. Uh, this one's going to end 7 2. Advantage Prairie over Evergreen. Nice little shot of the stadium there. Kyle, it's been an absolute pleasure calling these matches with you. It's always sad that we only get a few of them, uh, but I'll always love working with you and, and the staff that we have here. We got some great replays of tonight's match. Here's the, the first goal of the game. Millie Suarez gives Evergreen the one nothing advantage. Good poke past the keeper there. Here we go. This is the first one for Prairie. Just squeezed right through there and touched into the back of the net. Alyssa Talkington with that shot. Number 25 here for, for Prairie. Morgan Borwick, her first goal. And those were back-to-back, -back too. The, uh, the own goal against Evergreen just, just trickled a, in. Yeah, just unfortunate for them. It was the drop oh. back in the second half. Brilliant heads-up play by Malika Quigley. Just right over the keeper. Nothing she could do. That was a great save. Yeah. Here's, here's another the... Hyler on the PK. Love it. Yeah, what a second half she had. Team was so happy, too. There you go. Just squeezed it right by her far post. That was another nice goal right there by Paige number Starley. eight. And oh, post. This is the, the triple is the, crossbar. That's right. Post, post. And then yeah. a little flick. And I think, Kyle, this is the one. That was just a great cut right there through the two defenders. Leah Kenston. Well done. Using that speed to our advantage. Again, thank you all for joining us, whether that was on YouTube Live, whether that was Comcast 28 or 328. We appreciate you guys joining us here. Uh, we'll be back more than likely here 11 months from now. Well, or, or, or in the spring. Hopefully we'll get some men's matches come this spring. Uh, but once again, it's always a pleasure uh, for us being able to call these matches for you at home. Uh, we absolutely love it. On behalf of... Kyle Bleke and myself, Mark Petrosi, we thank you so much for tuning in and watching these wonderful matches with us, and we hope you have a wonderful evening tonight.